Danger Man here from the Alamo in Jackson, New Jersey. This is right next to the Great Adventure Amusement Park. It's smack dab in the middle of New Jersey. It's an annual scenario event. It takes place in the middle of the summer, but wonderfully under the shade of the trees until the final battle where we attack and defend the fortress. So the Alamo, as everybody knows, is an historic event. However, it's being replicated here at Top Gun with a fortress attack and defend style scenario where about two to 300 players show up for the day. Here's the staging area, and we're going to do some quick, smooth transitions so you're not, you know, bored with one shot. This is from the Mexican side, where we're all getting ready to chrono and go through that net. Once everybody's through, now we're at the actual starting point. After everybody's chronoed and every man's accounted for, the game can begin. So to the left there, you can see in that sunlight there, there's like an elbow that goes around a water hazard. So our team can push around that elbow and, and to a wider area to push through and, and inevitably push the Texans back to their fortress where the game is stalled for about a 40 minute break or a half an hour or so, whichever they decide. And then we do the final battle. So as it is now, the Mexican side is just about to start. You're gonna watch myself, there's my son, Danger Boy Dalton. Uh, with uh, the players to the right there are gonna kind of push the right tape line. The players to the left are gonna obviously hug the elbow and everybody in the middle is gonna just make a forward push. My intention is to is to push to the middle, middle right. My son inevitably takes the tape line with a number of other players. So here we go, we're on the move. Sorry for about this shaky video, there's no gimbal on the top of my head to keep this thing steady, but it's still good footage. In the meantime, you'll see the players are now running downfield and spreading out like ants. We tried to establish before the beginning of the game, and I try to do this with every team that I'm with because it makes sense that all players don't run to one flood to one section. And I, I usually make a point of, you know, letting everybody know, let's, you know, if you want to run to the left, stand to the left. If you want to run middle, run middle. Stand in the middle if you want to run right. In this way, if everybody stands to the right, you know we have nobody running left, and then people then have some common sense and move about and, re, you know, readjust, you know, calibrate the attack so that it's not unbalanced. So here it is. I'm about to approach the woods of the, um, of the uh, I guess they call this tiny town. And most years, the Texans will meet us here. Uh, this year, uh, fewer players, maybe, whatever reason was, we were able to get through Tiny Town. No battle took place in Tiny Town than this particular uh, year. And this is uh, the, I think, the 13th annual Alamo. And, and um, we need people to run. I'm about to just simply go right on down into this ravine, which is always flooded, it's always muddy. You can lose your shoes in here easy. If you're not, you know, um, you know, in a pair of sneakers, um, if, you're, if you're in a pair of boots, you're good. But if you're in a pair of sneakers, you got to really be careful. Or cleats, things like that. It'll suck them right off you if you step down into this muck. And I'm just getting an eyeball before I say, you know what? I'm going to take the plunge. I'm going to move across. And sadly, the Texans really didn't put up a battle on this day in this area. So this was really easy for us to push them back. It took us maybe half an hour to 40 minutes to go all the way across field and to stall the game, to pause it for the final battle. I mean, we just essentially owned the Texans. It was, it was pretty ugly. If you were on the Texan side, I don't think you had fun. I'm, I'm just going to be straight up about that. And in our case, you know, we, it wasn't a true K-walk. You, you had to play smart to move up field if you were a point man. But if you were at a mid, midfield position or a back man, this was, uh, this was a snooze. You just kind of walked up with everybody until it was done and over with. Now you may notice I'm adjusting my gun hold, and that is because of the cameras that I have on me. I have one on the right side of my of my uh, my head, and I have a 360 at the top. Which, if you haven't seen the 360 video, you may want to check that out. I'm not going to lie; my 360 video from this event wasn't the best. If you want to see some amazing 360 video, check out the Ion 360 video. That's from a skirmish. It's a stationary camera. You know, there's 5,000 players on the field, and it was out there in opening battle. Amazing to look at. Uh, you you can't go wrong, especially if you have like a VR or Oculus. But if you got just a smartphone, you can just spin around, and it's really cool with 360 to get a full perspective. I'm shooting over to the right here, and my son, Danger Boy Dalton, is shooting up that tape line, and he's claiming later, you know, 15, 16 year olds are. I got 100 people, blah blah blah, you know, that kind of crap. Anyway, so I'm just doing my part, trying to. To push people back so that anybody who's moving the perimeters can move can move up. If you know anything about paintball, you obviously know that in most cases you're not 
in a scenario or any wood bowl game, you're usually not trading paint with somebody right at your nose. You're always shooting off at an angle. So as a middle player, my job is to clear the left and right. So that's my primary objective. If somebody makes themselves available to me right over the, the top of the bunker, I'll do a pop-up and take them on real quick. Why not? But my, my job is to look left and to look right and to clear those sides so that those players can move up. They, in turn, are trying to clear the middle for me so I can move up. I've, my knees are soaked right now. This is really nasty, wet ground that I'm in. I'm, I'm, as soon as I sat down in this, I was like, all right, I'm committed now. And if you've watched the 360 video, you'll notice that I mentioned at this point, once I see players move up to my position, I am now motivated to bump again. I, I like to be the point man. I like to brawl. And if you're watching a 360 video, the great thing about my 360s is you can see who's behind me and who's in front of me. And there's usually nobody in front of me. There's usually players behind me. And it's not because I think I'm a hot shot. It's just, again, I want to play the front position in woods ball. It, maybe in speed ball, it might be different. Maybe I'd be, you know, a better off as a Dorito player than a snake player, etc. But when it comes to the woods ball, uh, I like to be up in people's nose. I'm, I'm only going to walk around the back line to kind of get an idea where it is I need to be, and then I'm going to move. So here it is I'm about to move. I think I've been talking to uh, the guys from High Rollers to ask me to help me move, and they do help me move. Um, you're going to hear me at some points tell players I want to bump, and they're going to support me. And by telling, you know, by shutting me down, saying, wait, wait, wait. Great. That is, that is the way paintball should be played when you're playing with randoms. Everybody's communicating. It makes a hell of a difference. Okay, so what is the beeping sound? That is the R2. That is the die rotor 2. And that's just let me know I'm low on paint. So love that feature. If you're looking for a good, ro uh, good loader, then go with the rotor. I've always been in love with that particular brand. You know that. Uh, I'm sponsored by Die, but I approached them. They didn't approach me. And it took me a while to, uh, to, to, to earn their trust and their support. But uh, it's a good relationship now. They know what I can do for them. They, I, I know what they can do for me. And, and honestly, if you're looking for gear, you've seen me carry it for years before I was even sponsored. Go with Die Gear because it's going to stand up over the test of time. I mean, that's really what it's all about. Now, you're seeing me bump from left to right on this tree, and that's for a reason. I am in a precarious position. I needed this position to bump from, but uh, being in here, I had to play left to right because paint was coming in from the left and right side. So depending on where it was coming from, I'd play the other side. Cover fire! Cover fire! Making a move! Hold up, hold up, hold up. Say when! Yes. Now, if you're new to paintball, you, you really need to appreciate the beauty of that situation. Whereas, you know, once that paint started the rock, Maybe I was rolling, and Help that's how it's done. That. You just you you announce your cover fire. Once it comes, you go. You don't wait. You don't go. Are you clear yet? You know, you just go. Now, in regards to where the Texans are, you may not be able to see them that well. I mean, this is some pretty high res footage with some clarity on the camera, but. There is a lot of them up on that ridge, and thankfully, we're just plucking them off one at a time in their forward positions, which they can't retake, and that's why we just keep pushing. Now, do you see that daylight to the left there? That's the elbow. That's where that water hazard is out there, so our team is really tight on that corner on the left there. This is a compressed area. This is, my, this is almost the most narrow or the bottleneck, the most narrow point of the field. I would say if you were to say where is the most narrow point, the bottleneck of this field, it's probably at that ridge line from side to side. So once we push through there, it's going to open up real wide and we have a lot more field to take. Now this video is going to cover the entirety of the entire tack. We're going to jump here in a moment though where I've been shot out and I've went back and gotten pain, come back. And we're going to jump into a point where a player's actually broken their collarbone and the players are taking a break. They're sitting down waiting for him to be taken off the field. And as you can see here, everybody's taking a seat. I'm going to jump here real quickly to when this delay now? was over with and the players Are finally get to start again. So that transition should take place right about now. We're going to fast forward here because this game is all but over. We're slaying these guys. There's nothing for them to fight for. If you look through the daylight there, you can see that's where we need to reach and it's done. And then we take our proverbial break. 
for about 20, 30, 40 minutes, whatever they announce how long it's going to be, and then we start the final battle. But while we're doing the um, this fast forward motion, you'll see my son and I working up the tape line. So if you're curious as to what's going on during that speed motion, we're just working up there uh, the tape, making certain. So this is the lesson we learned here. If you're going to play at the Alamo, play for the Mexicans. <laughs> it's usually easier. Um, defending the base is a pain in the ass. You always get overrun. There's always going to be quality players on the Mexican side that are willing to make the moves that are necessary. So it always favors the Mexicans. But if you want a challenge, you play in the Texans. It's really that simple. If you want a challenge, you play for the Texans. Uh, we're right now running up the tape line, in case you're wondering, this little fast-forward motion there. And I, with my son as well and I, we're moving up. When we get to the end of this video, I'm going to say I'm bored and we're shutting down. Believe it or not, that was at the time in which they blew the whistle and said, we're done. Essentially, we ran out of Texans. I mean, we shot them all. If you look through that clearing, you're going to see that um, that's as far as we needed to go. And it seemed like we had 100 players, and they had 15. I mean, it was just nasty. And, again, if you're going to play in the Alamo, you want a challenge, you play on the Texans. You want to play knowing that it's going to be a free ride. Play for the Mexicans. Uh, I played for the Mexicans uh, because I had so many players that I knew they were on the Mexican side, but I felt bad for the Texans, so I flipped, at least on this particular year. It's not like this every year. Some I mean, years are odd and all strange and different, but, you know, this is paintball. You, know, you never Put really know. Uh, this particular section of the field, by the way, is also kind of uh, mucky, but it's pretty cool because of these little teepees that you there can bump we go. up on. Right, let's there listen now. to the rest, nope, still, rest, and we'll just play it out. I can do something about this. <laughs> oh. See how bad it is. Oh, one more note. I ran out of air right here. I went this entire game on 145.52. Go figure. I must have broken paint my loader. I just ran out of air. All right, so in just a few seconds, they're going to announce, I mean, literally a few seconds after this, they announce the game is over. And, uh, hey, you stuck around this long. Right, I saved the best anyway. for last. Final Cut battle, please. See you soon.